Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. I feel like I haven't sat here for ages, even though I have. So I'm sure you guys already know what I am doing today. I'm doing a reaction video, just very quickly. I know my reaction videos get like a lot of views, so I just wanna put this out there, just to warn you guys, there is a few fake Facebook profiles that have taken, um, videos from my actual Facebook page, which I'll link below so you guys know it's a real one. And they are pretending to do giveaways where they give away money, um, and it asks you to register on this thing, and then it asks you to do all this other stuff. They're fake and they're scams, so please don't fall for them. Usually they'll spell my name wrong, which is a really big giveaway, or they'll be um, typing in different languages. I only speak English, unfortunately, and there's loads of different things. I will never message you from my Facebook account. I will never ask for any details. I will never ask you to click any links, and I more than likely won't do a giveaway on Facebook. It's always gonna be on YouTube if I do one. But yeah, so just, just please watch out for that. If it, it looks really like dodgy and too good to be true, then that's the case. And please send me links and like you have been doing to these Facebook pages so I can report them and then I can report them to who I need to report them to also. So today I'm going to be reacting to somebody who I get sent a lot of her posts and I see her a lot on TikTok when I don't really use TikTok, I only use it when I'm doing like my TikTok reacts. So luckily I get a load of like makeup content. So I'm going to be reacting to Michaela Naguera who is um, a makeup artist already. So this is going to be a makeup artist reacting to a makeup artist. And the reason I went to react to her today is because I've included her a lot in my TikTok reaction videos, some Instagram reaction videos, and despite from first impressions, looking at her videos, how you guys might think I might react to her videos, it's kind of the opposite in a lot of ways. So we're going to take a look at her um, tips and tricks today, and we're going to look at it together, we're going to learn together, I'm going to do my usual reaction kind of situation. But first of all, before we get into it today, if you guys don't know who I am, if you've never been here before, hi, my name's Robert, I'm a professional makeup artist here on YouTube and also in real life. When I say profession, I mean it's been my sole paid profession for the last 13 years, um, YouTube has kind of become my like main source of income at the moment. I've done everything from private clients to fashion week to editorial. Most of what you can think of to do with makeup, um, I've done it in a professional setting. Um, so that's why I make these videos. And the reason I make these videos is to kind of different, differentiate yeah, you know what I'm saying, between what we see online and how that works in real life and how realistic it is and how it can work for you and how sometimes it can not work for you. With um, like, like Instagram makeup, TikTok makeup, all this kind of stuff, I do realise there's a whole generation that has been born into um, makeup routines and makeup tips that have been birthed in front of um, cameras and in front of lighting and in front of professional lighting. Um, and these are techniques that have literally been created under like YouTube circumstances. So lights, lights, cameras, post editing, all this kind of stuff. So that's kind of why I've made this channel and why I kind of stepped into this kind of reaction videos is to not bitch about people's makeup or the person as an individual. It's to give you back that feeling of it's okay that some things you see online don't work for you. Because I get so many messages from people saying, I didn't want to wear makeup anymore, I don't wear makeup anymore, and I don't do this anymore because I feel left out by the industry because of what I see online doesn't work for me. What you see online probably doesn't work for people doing it on themselves either in real life. On camera it looks great, on camera it looks incredible, on camera now my skin looks incredibly smooth but close up it is so crusty because I have bad skin at the moment but lights are making everything look perfect and it is as simple as a ring light. So that's why I make these videos. And I know some people may say there's no rules to makeup. There's absolutely no rules to creativity and individuality. However, makeup is an art, and like most art forms, there is a theory. And a theory isn't to say, no, you can't do that, or no, you can't do whatever you want. The theory is for people who want to learn how to do makeup, either in a professional setting, so um, they can do their job properly and respectfully, and um, be um, treated respectfully as well, and not just um, somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. But the theory is there as well, because things like different textures don't mix, different colours don't mix, different um, things, there are some things that just don't work. And again, it's getting over that, oh, but my favourite influencer does it and it's great on them on camera, but how does that translate into real life? And that's what these reaction videos are for. But yeah, I think I've gone on too much. This is a scar also for anyone who doesn't know, and it's never affected my abilities to be able to do makeup professionally, despite what some people might think. Okay, <laughs> so let's get into it. Let's take a look at Michaela. And we're mainly taking a look at her on TikTok today, although she is, I believe, on most social media platforms. 
All right. What's poppin'? Can you do your makeup with no powder and have it look good and last all day in 90 degree heat? The answer to that is fuck yeah. I'm satin with my Ole Henriksen Banana Bright Primer. Once you apply a brightening primer, we're gonna get real fucking sticky up in here with the Milk Hydra Grip. I'm gonna cover up my acne scarring like usual, not part of the routine though. Now, I'm actually gonna recommend using a stick foundation compared to a liquid. Stick foundations are more likely to dry down on the skin and not move around. I'm using the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. Similar to a stick foundation, I recommend a stick contour if you're doing contour. This is the ABH contour stick. Looks pretty good, right? Just looks like skin. I recommend using a matte concealer now. I'm using the Jouer Essential High Coverage. I'm adding the Kaja Beauty Liquid Blush. That shit is so fucking cute. I'm gonna add the Kylie Wet Set because it's kind of like a cream highlighter. Look at that glow. Now I'm gonna do my eyes, lips, and brows off camera. Don't forget to add a setting spray. And that's it. You don't need powder to do your makeup. So this is something I have said over and over again, and I saw when I did my um, reaction video to Raw Beauty Christie, she said it as well, and it's very, it's a very unpopular opinion for some reason, but you don't need powder in your makeup. I feel like powder in general is a when you need it, where you need it product, if you need it at all. So um, for someone like me who's very greasy, I will do my makeup and then maybe throughout the day, I might powder a little bit around my nose, I might powder my forehead slightly, but you don't have to use powder to, um, one, you don't have to use it in general, but two, you don't have to use it to set your makeup. And here's why, like Michaela said in these videos here, and like you can see from what she's doing, that she uses, and I noticed this through a lot of her videos, is she uses skincare and textures and bears in mind the textures of her foundation, how that re um, is represented in her skin, what, that doesn't make sense, how that matches her skin type, and she bears in mind the longevity of where and how they're gonna sit on her skin. And that's something we don't think about. We often think about full coverage, get in your face, let it do whatever it needs to do, if we prep the skin underneath correctly, if you are oily and you and you prep your skin correctly and have that barrier between your skin, because the oil breaks down our foundation from the inside out, you don't have oil coming at you this way breaking your foundation, it what, it's what comes out from your skin that breaks down your foundation. Oil breaks down makeup, we use oil makeup removers, so why would your skin oil not break, break down your foundation, you know? So if we prep that skin correctly in a way that's gonna um, stop excess oil from coming through and benefit your makeup and, and prolong the wear of your foundation, you don't need powder to set unless you want an extremely, extremely matte finish. But then again, use mattifying skincare, use mattifying product. You know, for some fucking reason our nose doesn't like us and the makeup likes to break up on it throughout the day, I'm gonna show you how to fix that, cause that's fucking annoying. There's quite a few products I'm gonna use, so definitely get a piece of paper and a pen ready, and let's do it. I'm gonna declare myself the queen of fucking hyaluronic acid, cause we're gonna put a hyaluronic acid on our nose first, so you can use any one you like. So I'm using just one pump of that and patting it on my nose. Let that shit dry. So now you're gonna mix the MAC Painterly Paint Pot and the Professional together and create yourself a little mixture. Here we go, mix it up. Place it on the nose, blend it in. Your nose should feel totally matte now. Go on top of it with the Milk Hydro Grip. Just a little. And this is gonna make your nose real sticky. Finish off with a matte or a sticky setting spray. I'm using the Hangover. All right, now I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup like usual and I'll be right back. So this is my nose. It looks really good. It works for any skin type. Her eye makeup is always incredible. We'll get into that later. Um, yeah, so, oh, I look so pale today. So the nose on our face, as opposed to the nose somewhere else, <laughs> is um, probably one of the most potentially textured areas of our face. You have pores in there, you can have dry skin. Like me, I have dehydrated round here, but still oily with massive pores. Um, so makeup is really, really hard to get on there. And a lot of you will also find, this is a question I get a lot um, sent to me, is that makeup never sits on your nose, especially on this area here. But if we think about primers like um, Pore Professional, which I'm personally not a fan of, but it does its job, still not a fan. Um, they do fill in the gaps almost. So this is why I always say, you guys know who are always here on my channel, I always go on about using an eyeshadow primer before your eye makeup and not concealer because concealer has moisture to it. Concealer has um, 
moisture to it. So <laughs> it's gonna add to that oily area on our lids. So when you use an eye primer, it's like a waxy seal or waxy base that stops the oil from coming through, then stops your eye makeup from creasing. So that's why it's a great idea to use eye primer on your nose. One of the most oiliest places, stop that oil from coming through, but also the grip it has. It grips, we use it on our eyes because it grips the eyeshadow. It makes the pigmentation come out incredibly strong. So we can put products and so we can blend products so by using that on the nose, you're creating this non-slip surface that will grip onto your foundation or concealer, whatever it is you're using on your nose. This is a great tip for oily skin to prep oily skin, to prep a nose. Again, prepping the skin is more important than what you put on top. So that's an incredible tip. Setting spray on the face before foundation is something I always do on myself or oily clients because it it just helps again create that barrier. Um, so that's a great tip. You, She did go on top with Milk Hydro Grip Primer, which is one of my favorite overall primers. Do be careful and bear in mind what she said in the video as well, is tapping. You don't want to disturb the texture of the nose even more by rubbing. So tap, 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 tap from the beginning. Any product, even if you're not doing this technique, any product you're using on the nose, if you find you have texture around the nose, instead of a buffing motion, tap really lightly. And it's great to use your finger as well because the the you, the temperature, the body temperature, what am I talking about? Your body temperature helps to warm up the product and it makes it a little bit more um, easier to blend and a little bit more versatile in terms of texture and movement. Um, so that, that's a, a, good, a good technique. Yo, I got a treat for you guys today. You ever wish you could have the really clean, smooth under eyes with no patchiness and just a nice, even application of concealer. That's what we're doing today. All right, step one, just apply your foundation as you normally would. However, avoid the eye area. Now it's gonna look like this. You're gonna take your ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Spray or any spray with hyaluronic, spray it on your whole face to draw in moisture and smooth out lines. Looking shiny. Now you're gonna take an eye concentrate very different than an eye cream. It has to be a concentrate. I'm using the Clinique Moisture Surge. This shit is sticky as fuck. You're just gonna put it right on that under eye area. Now gently pat it in with your sponge and then let it sit for like two minutes. I'm gonna lay my concealer down and I'm gonna stop blending it in. And you should not have to set with powder with this technique. That's with the concealer on. Now I'm gonna finish my face. And that is it. First look, okay. <laughs> I love, I absolutely love her accent. I think it's incredible. I feel like she's gonna do my makeup like really well and then like punch me in the face. So I think there's something like charmingly um, um, harsh about, about her accent. I love it though, it's incredible. So, what, oh, what did we just watch? So I've actually included this one in the TikTok reaction video before, but for those of you, I'm just gonna put some bronzer on, one second. I always say I look like I shouldn't be pale. I look like I should be darker than I am, but I'm so pale. And I wear SPF 50 every single day to protect my skin from like, you know, aging. <laughs> Uh, it just means I get no colour to my skin, but you know what, I'd rather add it on with bronzer than, um, than have any kind of sun damage. So yeah, so like I said, I included it in a video before because she talks about using the um, eye concentrate under the eye and avoiding the eye area. I didn't realise that it wasn't common knowledge not to use foundation around the eyes. Personally, on clients, on myself, I don't build up foundation around the eyes. I leave it like a mask area um, because if you're going to put foundation on there and then concealer, you're going to get this really heavy, heavy build up of product. You have foundation and concealer gripping on to the lightest skin texture under the eye, the most fragile skin area. So it's going to pull down and drag and you're going to get creases. So by building up less product, you're going to get a nicer finish. Here's why it's important what she said about eye concentrate, and the same can go for like an eye serum. It's not as sticky, but an eye serum is quickly absorbed, is that you're not leaving a layer of product on the surface of the skin because it's absorbed quicker by the skin and you're left with a texture and a surface that is slightly sticky and tacky, but not greasy and overhydrated. So your concealer is gonna sit and grab a lot longer. I'll round up at the end why I like Michaela so much, but this is one thing I really like about her is she is one of the first um, I guess TikTok people, influencers, or like, you know, to talk about 
product texture and skincare texture. Again, we'll talk about it later, but yeah. Every basis I'm getting asked, how the fuck do you apply false lashes? So let's just figure that shit out together. Apply your mascara first, then choose your lashes. I'm gonna use Lou Maxi lashes in style Rome. Now most people are gonna have to cut your lashes because they're just gonna be too long. The way you cut your lashes depends on what look you want. If you want a more flared out look, cut the longer end of the lash. If you want a more dramatic look, cut the shorter end of the lash. If you're a beginner, I do not recommend using this duo lash glue. Rather, use the green duo strip lash glue. It's much better. Add a thin layer of glue and let it sit for 30 seconds. Take your lash and plop it right in the middle, like that. Once you got the middle glued down, take your end and plop that boy down. Finish off with the inner corner and just press that down. Use this tool to press it on. That was hard to show in 60 seconds. Comment down below with questions if you have them. Amazing. So here's the thing with um, lashes again is bear in mind the, the length. You have to trim them and bear in mind the height. One thing that she did mention in the video is depending on the look you want, if you want them thicker, if you want them more natural, where to cut them. Do bear in mind also of your space you have here. If I was to keep the long side in here, it'll be touching this bit off my eye and it'll be really uncomfortable. So do just bear in mind your spacing on your eye as well. Another great tip that you can do that if you do want more dramatic but you can't, you don't have that space um, and it's gonna be touching your, your lid, is cut from the longer side but take the bit that you cut and just build it up on the outside corner so you get more of a flare, if that makes sense. So don't waste the bits that you cut off, just add them to the outside corner. The thing she said about the glue, honestly, it's my favorite, favorite glue. I have it right here on my um, desk so I can use it whenever I film. The reason that glue is better than the um, duo glue with a blue writing is because the du duo glue with a blue writing takes forever to dry anyway. Um, it's more of like, um, if you've ever used like a liquid latex, it seems like that kind of texture and it stinks. Whereas the one in the green, the one in the tube actually mentioned this one, um, dries a lot faster in a way, but when, but you almost have more time to play with it. The first one, the first glue with a, with a blue writing, if you make one mistake, that glue sticks to your lid and fucks everything up. And you have this like patch of glue that you need to peel off. So go for this one, if you can find it, Go for that one. Today's video is gonna be about bacon. The most misunderstood makeup technique. Bacon is known as the technique that's gonna dry out your skin. Is that true? No. Is bacon for everybody? No. I'm gonna recommend bacon to anybody who has normal to oily skin or if you notice your makeup breaks up really easily. Bacon can dry out your skin. It can make you look cakey and dry and nasty. But not if you do it right. I'm just satin right off the bat. If you're not using a damp sponge to bake, you're doing it wrong already. I personally recommend translucent powder for anybody, and that's because it's less likely that it's going to oxidize. Bacon can brighten up under your eye and lock in the moisture brought about by your concealer and your skin prep. You take a little on your sponge. Using too much powder is a major mistake. Bake in areas where you're oily or where your makeup doesn't last. You're going to very lightly press the powder on, and you're not pressing it down all the way. Bacon can actually prevent eye creasing. See, I'm just lightly pressing it. Head over to pat two. Now I usually do two minutes for my bake. That's what I personally recommend. While my bake is set in, I'm doing my eyebrows usually. Now I'm using the Morphe M536 to brush off the baking powder. And you just wanna lightly brush it away so that you don't mess up your foundation. And then it gives you a really smooth finish. And it does not make you look dry and cakey. I don't have beauty mode on, by the way. If you're wondering, this is what my skin looks like with no beauty mode. Because when I use beauty mode, which is this, it looks very blurry, so I don't like that. All right, now I'm going to go add, you know, the rest of my makeup, the bronzer, highlighter, blush, eyes, lashes, lips, and I'll be right back to show you the finished look. Now, here's the finished look. I do want to say, if you do bake, definitely add in a hydrating sediment at the end, even if you're oily. If you do, for some reason, happen to add too much powder, that spray is going to help melt the powder into the skin so it doesn't look as powdery. There you go. Here's a close-up of the eyes. <laughs> now, you all know how much I absolutely despise baking with a passion. I think it looks um, cakey and horrible and dry and everything like that. However, if you are gonna bake, <laughs> this is probably the best way to do it. There's a few little bits in there I've actually mentioned, which I think are really important. And here's the thing, let me just say something. I use powder under my eyes 
absolutely. However, I don't bake, I just do a light layer of powder. Probably just slightly less than when, when she just used there. And I also use a brush and not a sponge because I find on me, I don't like how it sits under the eyes. And you guys know I'm all about like natural skin and things like that. Damp sponges are always great. Your sponge should always be damp when you're applying makeup. I know a lot of people use them dry to pick up powder and whack it on the face. Granted, it doesn't look dry or cakey on her in any way at all. Her makeup always looks amazing, but again, Bear in mind, skin prep, how you finish it up. She use a hydrating spray afterwards. I don't want to say too much because you guys know I don't like to promote baking in any way. Um, she looks great. I was gonna leave it at that. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, that was the amazing Michaela Nguera. So here's why, like I said in the beginning, a lot of you guys um, message me. They're always really nice messages about Michaela. It's like, um, you know, Robert, I love Michaela. What do you think of this method? And a lot of you do that, which I really appreciate because you give me content for my videos. Remember though, however, I'm not the authority on makeup. This is just, these videos I do is, is my opinion and how, and my personal style of makeup. Here's what I like about Michaela is yes, I would consider her makeup style the complete opposite to mine. But the reason I really, really like Michaela is because she does all this and she has reasons for everything. And she has, preparation, technical information. And by that, I mean things like, she talks about hyaluronic acids and hyaluronic um, serums and things like that, and how that texture is actually in enough to, you know, hydrate the skin, but still not be over hydrating. She talks about skincare, she talks about prep. She talks it step by step. She isn't dripping oils on her face. She isn't dripping product on her face and being like, no, and then, you know, dripping something on her face. She's really talking and thinking about how it's gonna all, how all her makeup and skincare goes together. She's not being crazy with these products for aesthetic, re aesthetic, aesthetic, you know what I mean, reasons to make it look amazing. What looks amazing is the end result of her makeup and the steps she has taken to achieve that look, which, for me, there is education in makeup and Michaela is an educator. She shows how if you want to do this full glam, if that is your choice of makeup that you want to do, here are the steps to do that and here are the steps to make sure that it looks as great as it can look by using all these techniques. And something else I really like is that she's managed to make makeup videos that are short and quick and educational and she's made those viral, which is kind of like my goal with my reaction videos, like this one is to make educational videos that um, a lot of people can hopefully see. Like I said at the beginning, I get people saying I don't enjoy doing makeup because I don't like baking, because I don't like, because I don't like doing my concealer and triangles. And again, that might work for people, but it might not work for you, and that is okay to do something completely different. It is okay that different makeup styles exist. Michaela can do all these techniques, and have the reason behind it. And it's okay that my makeup style exists and that I don't like makeup and that I don't like too much concealer. And the way she stands out to me compared to other people I've reacted to that do a lot more is that she isn't taking the piss out of a method. She isn't covering her whole face in color corrector. She isn't, like I said, dripping products and then not rubbing them into the face. She is using skin prep correctly and then she's going on to use makeup with a theory behind it and and doing it in a way that it seems educational. And that's why I enjoy her content, I enjoy her videos. For, not only because her makeup, the end result looks absolutely stunning, her eye makeup is some of the most creative I've seen. It's, it's amazing the way she puts colour together, the way she puts shapes together um, is, is incredible. But it's because I can watch her videos and feel like, although it may be a certain style of makeup, it doesn't seem like influencer going over the top makeup which I really, really like. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you learned something from today's video as well. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Consider subscribing if um, you want to. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you tomorrow, Monday. Bye.